Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, getting ready to read God's Word with the following Pat's Two Cents. Hello. Okay, this is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 through 17. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God yeah, that Bible is definitely a necessity now listen the reason I'm saying this a lot of times we're going to mix Pat's two cents because I got another word coming but see we don't always take this stuff seriously do you know I have seen demons disappear not only from rebuking them in the name of Jesus but from quoting God's word hmm. now one of the reasons why it talks about this as spiritual armor if you go now I'm just making an example if you go scuba diving and you have the tanks, the oxygen tanks, and the levels are set right, and they're attached right on your sit on your body, and you've got maybe a pressurized suit because you're gonna go down so far that your body will implode if you don't have the right kind of pressurized equipment. So what happens if there is a tear or a, uh, a puncture in your suit? It'll just be a matter of, of seconds or minutes. And you just might as well bend over and kiss your booty goodbye. Because it will be over. You have to wear a certain type of armor. Now, the way you... Your armor has to fit you, which means, I'm trying to really make this plain. When you put on the armor, you stand against the walls of the enemy. The power that comes to you comes through your righteousness, your obedience, your honesty, avoiding your feet running to mischief. Let me go through this because I really want you to hear what I'm talking about. Don't go anywhere. This is I'm going to try to make this really plain to you. When it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and all that. Okay, well, we know we're dealing with evil forces. We know that. Verse 13. Take unto you the whole armor of God, which means you can't walk this thing successfully partially dressed in your armor, which means you can't mix a sinful life with a righteous one. Now listen, you need to be able to withstand against evil, and this is how you do it. Your loins mm, going about with truth. Now, if you are driven by truth, if you are a person of integrity, if you can be trusted, depended on, 
if you are honorable and all your your motives are motives of integrity, honesty, and truth. You're a truthful person. You're genuine. That handles your loins because that's like your core. This is who you are. Your loins gird about with truth. All right. So you're living through the the power of honesty. You believe in it. You live by it. All right. Now we deal with. I'm trying to find it. Don't don't lose me here. Then you deal with your breastplate of righteousness. You have to have a righteous heart, and it has to be guarded. And the breastplate of righteousness is God's holiness. That is your protection, which means. If you are doing something for a righteous reason, God can easily warn you and say, don't do that. That's not going to turn out the way you think. You're doing it for the right reason, but they are not. So back up off of that. There's your protection. Breastplate of righteousness. You can't hear that if you're driven to mischief. If you are attracted to sin. All right. Oh boy. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You ever see some people who are always off and running to the races. Getting ready to kick somebody's behind or cuss somebody out. Getting, getting somebody told all the time. Drama, drama, drama. Yeah. When you are a peacemaker, everything in you will stop those feet from taking you into a war zone. And you will not have to fight battles that God has not ordained for you to fight. Allow those feet to be driven to peace. To avoid other people's drama and nonsense. All right. I'm trying to really break this down. A lot of times, you know, we hear it in one ear, out the other, because we only understood 10 or 15% of it. All right. Now, so you got your feet shot with the gospel. Well, yeah, your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, above all, taking the shield of faith. You can't live this life in righteousness if you don't even believe in it. You got to believe God. You got to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of you that diligently seek him. He rewards righteousness, you know. He rewards seeking his face. Okay, here we go. So, you have to have the shield of faith that's guarding you. Your faith makes you do right when you could so easily do wrong. Your faith keeps your mouth shut when you want to open it wide and cuss somebody out. Your faith keeps you from committing sexual sin. Your faith enables you to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Your faith. Okay, I mean, that covers the whole gamut. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation. Now, in Romans it talks about renewing your mind. You know, present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, which is your reasonable service. And, and, and be not conformed unto this world, but be transformed, changed, 180 degree turn about face by the renewing of your mind your body can't go where your mind won't take it your mind has to be set in order for the rest of you to follow suit hmm you cannot do an about face Without you making up your mind to do so. If your mind's not made up. There is no change. 
there will be no change because your mind is stuck where you are and if your mind is stuck so will you be and that's why we don't get the victory because we don't want it we want what we got we want to stay here and it is a battle because we really don't want to let that bad boy go renewing of your mind helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God demon come at you you can quote it, therefore it, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me Psalms 23 so that's the word that can get rid of a demon I rebuke you in the name of Jesus can get rid of a demon. Glory to God, hallelujah, I praise your holy name can get rid of a demon. And resisting the devil so that you can live righteously, that too removes a demon. All right, so we've covered The armor of God. Now, we're not done. I'm going to come back on the second one. I was going to continue with this. But I think I need to move because I know our attention spans are short. And there's PP time and our programs on TV and phone calls and texting and all that other stuff. So I'm going to stop here. But I want you to know that you will not walk long with the Lord without spiritual armor. You must have it. God bless you to find the one that fits you.